Hey guys, it's Sagar and in this video, I'm going to do a quick unboxing of this iPhone 15 Pro, tell you guys what all it offers and give you my initial impressions. First, let me tell you why I went with this iPhone 15 Pro and not the 15 Pro Max. Whenever I get a new iPhone, I always like to go with the phone which has the best camera setup. And while it might seem like the iPhone 15 Pro Max with the new Tetra Prism lens and the 5x optical zoom is that phone for most people, I'm not someone who takes a lot of zoomed in shots, so the 3x telephoto lens on this phone seems to be enough for me. I rarely went past 3x zoom when I was using the iPhone 14 Pro, so I feel like that is the perfect reach of the telephoto lens for me. And while the weight of the iPhone 15 Pro Max is now lowered, it is still pretty much the same as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which was the last max size iPhone I owned, and the only reason I sold it was the extra weight. So going with the regular iPhone 15 Pro made more sense for me. And I also ended up saving 25,000 rupees because that is the difference between the starting price of the base variant of the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. So you could say price of these phones was also a deciding factor for me. Alright, now that you guys know my reason for getting this iPhone 15 Pro, let us now go ahead and unbox it. I went with a natural titanium as that seems the most popular choice this time. It's a 128GB storage variant and I bought it for 1,34,900 rupees. Yes, I don't have an HDFC card so I did not get a discount on it. Gearing off these two tabs, turning the box and lifting up the lid, we get a first look at the brand new iPhone 15 Pro which is sitting at the top. I will admit I was a bit skeptical at first about this color, but now that I have seen it in person, I really like how the natural titanium color looks. And it's surprising how light this phone feels in the hand. It's just 20 grams lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro, but for some reason it feels much lighter. It honestly feels so much closer to the iPhone 14's weight now, which is amazing. Other than the iPhone 15 Pro, inside the box, you now get this nice braided cable which has USB Type-C port on both the ends because the entire iPhone 15 series now comes with a USB-C port for charging and data transfer. Although this phone has a USB 3.0 port, this cable only supports USB 2.0 speeds, so if you need faster data transfer speeds, in typical Apple fashion, you will have to buy a faster USB-C cable separately. Other than that, we get a SIM tray ejection pin because all the iPhones outside of US still support a physical SIM card, which I think is much more convenient. Then there are some leaflets with warranty and regulatory information and again a single Apple sticker, which I am going to keep safely in my collection. Let me keep the box contents aside and get back to the phone. The titanium sides look amazing and I am especially happy that these are not as shiny like the stainless steel ones and they won't be collecting as many fingerprints and smudges as the pro iPhones from before this. Now the first thing that I like to do whenever I get a new phone is to put it in a good case. That is where MacBag, our sponsor for today's video comes in. They make these amazing silicon cases with some of the strongest MagSafe magnets built in. This case has a very soft touch feel to the back which feels amazing and provides a ton of grip to the phone. You can even attach various MagSafe accessories to the back of this case like this MagBag wallet. It attaches to the back very firmly and you can not only store your cards and cash in this wallet but it also acts as a kickstand for when you want to place your phone down. The finger loop at the back of the wallet helps you grip the phone even better. And with the help of this small Mac stick, you can attach this phone to any surface of your liking. A link to this MacBag case is in the description and make sure to use the discount code TW15 at checkout to get 15% discount off your order. One of the visual changes that can tell the iPhone 15 Pro apart from the iPhone 14 Pro other than the titanium frame of course is the new action button on the left side. This action button replaces the mute switch. It is a customizable button and by default it lets you silent your phone when you long press it. But you can assign various other functions to it like opening the camera app or even heading straight into a specific camera mode, turning on the flashlight, start recording a voice memo and things like that. I will have to use it a bit more to see how useful it is. Now because it is on the left side, that too above the volume buttons, I don't know how much I am going to end up using it. I mostly hold my phone in the right hand and reaching it like this is a bit difficult. Maybe I could have used it a bit more if it was on the right side, above or below the power button. But I think it is too early to say right now, so I am going to use this phone for a few more days and weeks and let you guys know how useful it is for me. The other ports and buttons remain the same. There are volume up and down buttons on the left side just below the action button. Then there is a physical SIM tray below that for the nano SIM card. Power button is on the right side and at the bottom we have the speaker grill, a microphone and a brand new USB Type-C port for charging and data transfer which supports USB 3.0 transfer speeds. Unlike the last 3 years, the frame of all the iPhone 15 series phones now get a slight curve to the front and back edge. Apple calls these contoured edges and it makes the phone feel much more comfortable in the hand. Well personally, I didn't have a lot of issues with how the frame was before. I am sure this must be a welcome change for many people who likes to use their phone without a case. Looks wise, I think the flatter edges look more pleasing to me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. As I said before, I love how light this phone feels and because of its weight and contoured edges, it fits perfectly in the hand. This is one of the thickest pro iPhones but honestly, I don't really mind the thickness that much. I have always said that I would be happy to carry a thicker phone if it packs in more tech or battery inside. It's also a millimeter or so narrower and shorter 
but that difference is so little that I don't think it makes much of a difference even if you are coming from an older Pro iPhone. The display stays the exact same as iPhone 14 Pro. So it is still a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display with a resolution of 2556 by 1179 pixels. It gets ProMotion support with adaptive refresh rate, always on display, HDR support and it still retains the dynamic island which we saw debut on last year's iPhones. It also gets just as bright as before, so 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content and 2000 nits of peak brightness when you are outdoors. The bezels all around the display are now a bit narrower. I don't know if you can tell this or not, but these are now the thinnest symmetrical bezels on any phones out there. The display again gets a ceramic shield protection which according to Apple is still the strongest glass on any smartphone. That combined with the titanium frame makes this one of the most durable iPhones ever. That being said, I would still be using it with a case and a screen protector as I don't want to test out if it is really as durable as Apple claims it to be. I will happily leave that testing to Zach from Jerry Rig Everything. At the back, we still see three camera lenses and a LiDAR sensor. I'm not sure if this year's lenses or even the camera module itself is the same size as the iPhone 14 Pro or if it is any bigger. At a first glance, it looks the same size to me. Specifications wise, the cameras at the back sound like they are the same ones as on the iPhone 14 Pro but in their launch event, Apple said that the main camera on the iPhone 15 Pro is now more advanced and features an even larger sensor than the main camera on the iPhone 15 which if you guys don't know gets the same 48 megapixel camera as the iPhone 14 Pro. So I'm going to have to do a bit more digging to find out if the sensor on this phone is really bigger. I'll let you guys know about it in my detailed camera review of this phone. For now, here are the specs of the cameras. The main camera gets a 48 megapixel sensor with f1.78 aperture and 24mm lens. This camera finally gets a new coating which they say can reduce lens flare. How effective it is in real life is something I can only tell you after testing this phone in various lighting conditions. So again, more on this in the detailed camera review. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you don't want to miss that one. Next two cameras get 12 megapixel sensors. Ultra wide one has f2.2 aperture and the ability to take macro shots. And the telephoto lens gets 3x optical zoom lens and f2.8 aperture. So that is it for the exterior of this iPhone 15 Pro. Inside, we get a brand new A17 Pro chip which is built on 3 nanometer architecture. This time it gets 6 CPU and GPU cores with 8 gigs of RAM which is 2 gigs more than last year's Pro models. Battery capacity of this iPhone 15 Pro sits at 3274 mAh which is just a marginal increase over the 3200 mAh battery on the iPhone 14 Pro. While this isn't much, I am sure the new processor will give us some gains in the battery department. But this can again only be known after using this phone for a few weeks so I will talk more about the battery of this phone in one of my future videos. Now for charging, you do get the USB Type-C cable in the box. But you will have to buy a charger separately unless you have a USB-C charger lying around in your house. If you are going to get a new charger, go with a 30W USB-C charger because this phone supports a maximum charging speed of 27 watts. It doesn't support super fast charging. But in 30 minutes it can go from 0 to 50% and in 45 minutes it can reach up to 75% of the battery capacity which I think is enough for most people. It is running on iOS 17 out of the box and combining that with A17 Pro, the performance should be stellar on this iPhone 15 Pro for years to come. If you have been following me since some time, you know that I am already working on a dedicated camera review while you are watching this video. And that video will be up on the channel in the next few days. Not just that, I have many other videos including a full comparison with the iPhone 15 and even a camera comparison with a few other phones and a video about best cases for this new iPhone and a lot more coming out in the next few days and weeks. So definitely make sure that you have the notifications for this channel turned on. Until then, if you guys want to get this iPhone 15 Pro, I will really appreciate if you get it from the affiliate links in the description section. So what are your initial impressions about this iPhone 15 Pro and which of these is your favorite color? Let me know in the comments. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for a lot more coverage on this iPhone 15 Pro. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.